Okay, we're going to continue reading the book Chains. We are in the middle of page 18. Um, and we'll uh, kind of summarize what happened yesterday. So yesterday in the story, uh, Mr. Robert Finch was quickly taking the girls to this tavern. He wants to try to sell them uh, as quickly as possible and then be on his way. So while they're there, they meet the tavern uh, owner's wife is this Jenny who used to, uh, was an indentured servant and knew Isabel's parents when she was younger and knew Isabel when she was born. She's, she's kind of in the back kitchen feeding the girls and being nice to them. But now I think it's time Robert, Mr. Robert Finch is going to try to sell them or something like that. So we'll see what happens in this uh, page. So we're on page 18, the middle of the page. A thin woman stood next to Mr. Robert. Her plum-colored gown was crisp and well-sewn. An expensive lace trailed from the small cap on her head. She was perhaps five, uh, five and forty years with pale eyebrows and small eyes like apple seeds. A fading yellow bruise circled her right wrist like a bracelet. Uh, she looked us over quickly. Sisters? Two for the price of one, Mr. Robert said. Hardest working girls you'll ever own. What's wrong with them? The woman asked bluntly. Why such a cheap price? Mr. Robert's snake smile widened. My haste is your good fortune, madam. These girls were the servant of my late aunt, whose passing I mourn deeply. I must quickly conclude the matters of her estate. The uh, recent unrest, you know. A man joined the woman, his eyes suspicious and flinty. He wore a red silk waistcoat under a snuff-colored coat with silver buttons, a starched linen shirt, and black uh, breeches. The buckles on his boots were as big as my fist. And what side do you take in the current situation, sir? He asked. Are you for the king, or do you, dis or do you support the rebellion? Conversation at nearby tables stopped as, I, as people listened in. I pledge ourselves uh, to the rightful sovereign, the king, sir, Mr. Robert said. Washington and his rabble, uh, rabble may have taken Boston, but it's the last thing they'll take. So right now, again, this is about the time of the revolution. Um, so George Washington and uh, people in the American, some of the colonists took over Boston, um, and the British are still technically in charge here. So the, the guy he's trying to sell the girls to are saying, are you for the king or are you for the uh, rebel, rebels and things, or the patriots, the people who are acting up? And Mr. Robert says, I'm for the king. Okay. Um, uh, the strange little bow and uh, the stranger gave a little bow and introduced himself. Eli Lockton at your service, sir. This is my wife, Anne. Mr. Robert bowed politely in return, ignoring the muttering at the table behind him. May I offer you both uh, some, some sup and a drink that we might get better acquainted? They all sat. Jenny swooped over uh, to take their orders. Ruth and I stood with our backs against the wall as Mr. Robert, uh, Robert and the Locktons ate and drank. I watched them close. The husband was a head taller and twice the girth of most men. His shoulders rounded forward and his neck seemed to pain him, for he often reached up to rub it. He said he was a merchant with business in Ma Boston, New York, and Charleston, and complained about how much the Boston uprise cost him. His missus sipped Jenny's chowder, shuddered, uh, shuddered at the taste, and reached for her, law, for her mug of small beer. She stole glances at, at, at us from time to time. I could not uh, figure out what kind of mistress she would be. In truth, I was struggling to think straight. The air in the tavern had grown heavy, and the weight of the day uh, pressed against my head. When the men took out their pipes and lit tobacco, Ruth sneezed, and the company all turned and considered us. Well then, Lockton said, pushing back from the table uh, to give his belly some room, the wife is looking for a serving uh, wench. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Lockton crooked a finger at us. Come here, girls. Mi uh, I took Ruth by the hand and stepped within reach. Mrs. Lockton studied her hands and arms, looked at our feet, made us take off our kerchiefs to look at her hair for knits. Can you cook? She, she finally asked me. Not much, ma'am, I admitted. Uh, just as well, she said. I don't need another cook. What do you do? 
I put my arm around Ruth. We can scrub your house clean, care for cows and pigs, work in your garden, and care for just about carry just about anything. My aunt trained them up herself, Mr. Robert added, and, and they come with blankets and shoes. Locked inside. Why not wait, Anne? Why not wait, Anne, and uh, procure another indentured girl in New York? His wife sat back as Jenny arrived with coffee. Indentured servants complain all the time and steal us blind at first opportunity. I'll never hire another. Jenny set the tray on the table so hard the cups rattled in their saucers. Lockton, who reached for a plate of apple pie, are you sure we need two? These are uncertain times, dear. Mrs. Regard Luth, Ruth, this one looks simple. Is she uh, adapolated? Uh, Ruth gave a shy smile. I spoke before Mr. Robert could open his mouth. She's a good, simple ma'am. She does what she's tr uh, told. In truth, she's a harder worker than me. Give her a broom and tell her to sweep and you'll be able to eat off your floor. Jenny poured a cup of coffee and set it in front of the missus, spilling a little on the table. She's prettier than you, uh, missus said, and she knows how to hold her tongue. She turned to her husband. The little one might be an amusement for the parlor. The big one could help Becky with the firewood and housekeeping. Jenny pressed her lips tight together and poured coffee for Lockton and for Mr. Robert. Mrs. bent close to Ruth's face. Uh, I do not uh, book foolishness, she said. Ruth shook her head from side to side. No fooling, she said. The Mrs. cocked her head from one side uh, and stared at me. And you, you are to dress me as madam. I expect obedience at all time. Insolence will not be tolerated, not one bit and you will curb your ten, uh, tendency to talk. Y yes, ma'am, I stuttered. Uh, what say you, Anne, Lockton said. We sail with the tide? I want these girls, husband, madam said. It's providence that I put them, in, that put them in our path. How much do you want for them, Lockton asked. Mr. Robert named his price. Our, uh, our price, two for one, uh, us being sold like bolts of faded cloth or chip porridge bowls. Uh, wait, Jenny announced loudly. I'll, I'll take them. The table froze. A person like Jenny did not speak to folks like the Locktons or Mr. Robert in that manner. Uh, Lockton stared at her as if she'd grown a second head. I beg your pardon? Uh, uh, Jenny uh, set the kettle on the table, stood straight, and wiped her palms on her skirt. I want them uh, two girls. I need help. We'll pay cash. Uh, keep to your kitchen, woman. Madam Lockton's words came out sharp, uh, loud and sharp. Did she change her mind? Uh, will she really uh, take us? Uh, work in the tavern wouldn't be bad, maybe, and Jenny would be kind to Ruth. I could, I could ask around about Lawyer Colonel's, pa Colonel's paper. When we found out Miss Mary's will, I'd work extra, pay, uh, extra to pay Jenny back for the money we cost her, fair and square. Ruth and me would stay together and we'd stay here, close to Mama. Please, God, please. Uh, leave us, Lockton said to Jenny, and send your husband over. Jenny ignored him. Uh, It'll take us a couple of days to get your money together, she said to Mr. Robert. We'll give you free lodging in the meantime. Mr. I Robert's eyes darted between the two bidders. Ruth yawned. I crossed my fingers behind my back. Please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God. Madam Lockton uh, flicked crumbs to the floor with her handkerchief. Dear husband, she said, these girls are a bargain at double the price. With your permission, might we increase our offer twofold? So that's basically saying, can we double our offer? Lockton picked his teeth. As long as we conclude the bit, this business quickly. Madam stared at Jenny. Can you top the offer? Jenny wiped her hands in her apron, silent. Well, Madam Lockton demanded. Jenny uh, shook her head. I cannot pay more. She bobbed a, a little curtsy. My husband will tally your account. Uh, she hurried for the kitchen door. Mr. Robert chuckled and reached for his pie. Well then, we had a little auction here after all. Such, uh, uh, such impudence is dis uh, disturbing, Lockton said. This is why we need the king, king soldier to return. He pu pulled out a small stack, sack and counted out the coins to pay for us. I thank you, sir, for the meal and the transaction. You may deliver the girls to the Hartsborn, if you please. Come now, Anne. Madam Lockton stood, and the men stood uh, with her. Good day to you, sir. 
Safe voyage, uh, ma'am, Mr. Robert replied. As the Lockins made their way through the crowded room, Mr. Robert dropped the heavy coins into a worn velvet bag. The thudding sound they made fell into the bottom, reminding me of cl clods of dirt raining down on a fresh coffin. Ruth put her arm around my waist and leaned against me. Okay, so that's the end of that section. So basically what happened, the girls got sold to a um, kind of a meaner couple that live uh, in New York. Miss Jenny tried to get in and buy them um, and tried to keep them with her and she was nice and that would have been great. Uh, and then, but back then, like there was a huge divide between the rich people and the, the poor people, kind of how they, like the, the poor people like Jenny weren't allowed to talk to the wealthier people kind of the way like the Lockton's like she did. So these girls are have been sold um, and now they're going to have to go on a boat to go, I think, go back to New York or to go wherever the Lockton's are going to take them. So we'll see what happens next time. I think we'll have some writing stuff that goes with this as well that I'll have you put in your reader's notebook.